Hey everybody, I am your host, Brendan. Welcome to Campus to Contracts. We are with the agent, Mason Williams. That's right, he's here to answer all your questions. He's here to follow all your chats. He can't wait, doesn't sleep, here all the time. We're gonna go over his schools, how they did, what he did this last week, what he's been up to, the life of the agent. Then we're gonna go over your junior year of high school, probably the most important year of high school. So for all those kids out there that are freshmen, that are sophomores, that are in junior high, Parents, if you have a kid who's a junior, this is the year we're going to be going over, and we're excited to get into it on this episode of Campus to Contracts. I am your host, Brendan, and with us now is Mason. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Another long week. How have you been? I'm doing great. I am probably had a Similar long week. My boys had a nice fall break. Lots of hockey this week, uh, this week and this weekend. We got to watch some uh, ASU hockey, uh, which surprisingly was very exciting. And they have a pretty good team this year. And uh, the boys got to do a lot of practicing. So looking really good. You know, fall break is a very new concept to me. I didn't, I didn't have that in high school or even middle school or anywhere until I got to college. So fall break, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I would like to have a, a three-month summer, the fall break, the winter break, more time off for the kids. I'm a big fan of that. I know they don't want to do it, but this is what we have. Anyways, Mason, why don't you let us know what were your teams doing this week, this weekend? How did they do? How happy are you? I went three for four, you know, so I had my, my, my boys at Penn, Ivy League football, went over Columbia 20-17. to 17. My boys in the ACC, Duke, Great win over NC State, 24-3. Duquesne, my grad school, with a win over um, Central Connecticut, 44-20. However, Atlanta did lose to the Washington Commanders, 24-16. Um, that was today. So three for four, pretty happy. All my alma maters and former colleges all got their dubs, got their work in, and Atlanta, unfortunately, just didn't pull that one out. Hopefully for those four for four. <clears throat> Yeah, for those that are following the NFL week this week, I, I call it the Vegas get all their money back week as all of the upsets seem to happen for those that were locked in and knew exactly what was going to happen and didn't go their way. Yep, that was a great week for college football for you. That's for sure. Duke did bounce back very nicely, I would say, um, and uh, looking really good and strong. Very good, strong program. Yeah, definitely. So what's your life been like this last week? What is the life of, of your travel, your uh, new signings, your new uh, client meetings? Anything you want to be able to share with us on this lovely uh, platform? Yeah, I got a couple things that happened. CFL news. Um, have a CFL client that's been playing out of his mind this season. Already rumors talking about he might be defensive rookie player of the year. Um, it's crazy because when we first got him to the CFL, he was actually cut by the team he's currently playing for. Then they brought him back, put him on the practice squad, had to start him because of an injury, and ever since then, playing lights out. Might be defensive player rookie of the year. That's what we're hoping for. Hopefully even more and get to the Grey Cup and win that championship. And uh, that's big news for him. Also, I signed a um, free agent who uh, I was talking to, and then he actually got a CFL contract. In the first weekend he had his contract, he played and started for his team and uh, had a good game. So CFL news for us, outstanding. Um, not much uh, XFL, USFL merger news. They still haven't really you know, made anything public. You know, there's rumors here and there, but nothing really to re uh, report on. Um, my XFL workout on the 7th went well. A lot of my clients did well. Um, they're still pushing out those results from that uh, workout. And I have another one next week on the 21st. That will be in San Diego. And uh, I got a lot of clients that are attending that workout. So we're going to see what happens with that and if I can shake any contracts coming from that type of workout. Um, don't really know how the XFL-USFL draft is going to go especially with this merger, so we're waiting on that news. And then finally, um, more young high school athletes, um, NIL deals, uh, collective negotiations with the colleges 
um, seeing how that's going. It's funny because as the season goes on and you get to watch these colleges and how they're performing and when they're winning, when they're losing, what kind of player production they're getting at certain positions, it's almost like you're now kind of recruiting the school. You know, trying to see how their production is so that you can kind of leverage that for your NIL deals with the collective so that these players can get over to those campuses and see what they can pull out. Um, other than that, there were some other small scouting things that I did, uh, looking at women's soccer, starting to get into that, especially with the club realm and more NIL and marketing deals coming that way. But kind of a short week for me. Yeah, it sounds really uh, sound really really light light <laughs> schedule for you. Um, backpack was light. A couple things that I want to take note when you're when you're um, when your clients, if you were the players that you've signed, when they have these performances, uh, obviously there's nothing you can say to them to make them perform, and obviously these athletes have to step up when they're given that opportunity. When you're having those conversations with them about how they're stepping up and how they're performing, how exciting is that for you to see them reaching the potential that not only you saw in them, but you believed in them and seeing them able to achieve that and go to those levels? Yeah, uh, I would say so many things happen in those phone calls and those conversations, right? Um, First, you get a sense of a feeling because I was a player, right? And I always wanted to be that agent who, or always wanted that agent to believe in me. So the fact that I get to be that guy to other players is phenomenal. It's a great feeling for me. Um, You get to see that they're finally um, being appreciated for their talent level, for all the hard work that they've put in. Um, Being on on a CFL roster is not easy whatsoever. Honestly, in my personal opinion, I think it might be harder than making an NFL team when it comes to just numbers and um, how long you'll be on that roster, simply because in the CFL there's rules where you cannot have the whole team uh, be from America. You have to have a lot of Canadians. So um, understanding all the things that go into getting on a squad and then they're finally given the chance to be on the field and they perform exactly how I expected them to perform, how they expected to perform, it's no better feeling in the world. And you know what's really special about it too? And I tell all my clients this. This is why I can. my agency is called Brotherhood Agency, right? We have men, women, entertainers, all athletes of all kinds. But when someone performs, you're not just performing for yourself. You're performing for other players, for other athletes to also get that chance down the line. Because I get to tell these teams now, I was right about this player, this player, this player. And so now I need you to trust me when I tell you I'm right about this next player, this next player, and this next player. So when my players perform well, they don't really understand and um, get that gravity of the situation that they're also helping other players that I represent who are free agents that are currently on the couch and currently not playing because their performance speaks to my ability to find players. I think I think in a similar light for those for those folks that provide talent, whether in the professional services or even here, when you have the trust where you're providing good people, that goes a long way. And as you're building that trust, that also goes a very long way. So congratulations to you and congratulations to your clients. I think that's fantastic for to see them perform like that. I also am very interested as we get closer to this merger. Um, this is going to be an interesting time for a lot of players for their opportunities and to all be on one stage, I think is a very big benefit to these players. But the, the most interesting thing that you talked about with colleges, it is so interesting to me that these kids now, and they're not even kids, these young adults have the opportunities in front of them to earn, have that earning capacity to be able to shop and to look at programs that they want to be a part of. And what are the benefits to them as they play this sport? Because we all know this is a very difficult sport. It doesn't have a long timeline. You can't play this forever. So to be able to look at those items and those opportunities, I think, is a a massive headwind for the players. And we've always seen the headwinds for the coaches. The coaches in a college program have more control than the NFL coaches. These college coaches that are a top tier, top tier co- talent coaches, um, you know, they, they get the they get the best deals, the best you know perks. It's great to see players starting to get that and achieve that. And in my opinion, I think that only bodes well to the whole entire program or the the sport in general. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
it is a wonderful time. Uh, a lot of the recent changes just in college football, I have completely agreed with, and I'm so happy to see. Um, starting with the transfer portal, and then these new NIO um, rules and regulations with players being able to get um, compensated for their name, image, and likeness. It has definitely opened the door and, and opportunities for young athletes at the college level and even sometimes in the high school level to start getting compensated for their talent, for their name, for their image, their likeness, their presence on social media and so forth. So it is really great to see, um, obviously, and it's no surprise to a lot of people in the football world that, you know, it comes with, you know, now there's a capitalistic portion that comes with all this stuff. You know, there's guys that are um, being offered this, being offered that. There are collectives that are, proving themselves to have a little bit more money than others and more support and better deals. There's so many more factors. It's truly a marketing um, candy land, to be honest. I would agree, and I think this steps really well into our, our program tonight regarding your junior year in high school. So back in your day of getting recruited, you were worried about what program you wanted to go to. You were worried about your plan B, which was to become an agent. Um, and then also you wanted to look at your plan A. What was the program like for college and things of that nature? With the NIL, these deals happen earlier. They happen sometimes in high school. They happen sometimes you know earlier in junior high. Doesn't depends on what the player is. Um, but as a junior in high school, there's m far more wide-reaching things to consider, to your point, about the university and the program itself than just, hey, I really like this coach or I really like the atmosphere of the university. So why don't you dive into – this is a huge year for most kids when you get to that junior year of high school. Let's go over what happens, how you get to that point, what you should be prepared for, and then how your outlook should be moving forward. So I'm going to let you take the stage about junior your junior year in high school. Yeah, Brennan, you are absolutely correct. In my opinion, junior year of high school, most important year of high school football, possibly of high school sports in general. Um, this is the time where you solidify what you've, um, you know, academically your plan that you've been on track since freshman year, that you've continued on track since sophomore year, that you're finally, you see the light at the end of the tunnel starting your junior year and you're working towards that seven semesters that we talked about last episode. Um, as far as athletically, you're going to have to do the absolute most this entire year. Junior year starts in January of your junior, of your actual sophomore um, academic year. As soon as your last sophomore game is played, you're now a junior. That's the mindset parents you need to have for your children. And young athletes, that's the type of mindset you need to have moving forward. You start your winter workouts um, at the beginning of spring, and you go through spring ball, you have summer ball, and then you're walking into your fall camp. This is the time, parents, where you really want to invest in the athletic future of your student athletes. This is when you're asking your coach about camps around the country, uh, at universities that have shown you interest or maybe that you just think that you can play with, uh, play at. This is a lot of self-research. You got to understand that there's a lot of high school athletes. I know there's a famous cliche saying that if you're good enough, they're going to find you. However, the truth of the matter is, is if you come from some of those big states like Texas, Florida, California, Ohio, Pennsylvania, um, Jersey, Louisiana, you can get lost in the sauce. It is very possible for that to happen where there's good talent that hasn't been sought after for a number of different reasons. It is your responsibility to put yourself out there. Closed mouths don't get fed. You need to put yourself out there. You need to contact these coaches and these player personnel people and get in touch with them and find out when are they having these camps. Make yourself known before you go to these camps in the summer. Junior year is also the time where you want to get extremely serious about your club football appearance and mostly I'm talking to the skill positions. Those skill positions being quarterback, running back, wide receiver, defensive back, linebacker, safety, um, not really interior linemen. No O lineman, no D lineman. But if you have a club team, you want to get on a good seven on seven program. You want to get on a program that is playing around the country or around your state 
in big time tournaments, playing against other players in your area, in your state, in the country that are possibly have offers already or possibly being looked at by other colleges. By the time you become a junior, it's a 365 day evaluation. And you were right, Brennan, when you mentioned like back in my day, um, I graduated the class of 2015, so it may not seem that long ago, but so much has changed where there wasn't NIL deals that were, um, you know, part of our recruitment. There wasn't social media was kind of just popping off. Um, but nonetheless, club football, going to camps throughout the summer, um, being in good communication with your high school coach and with um, recruiting uh, coaches from these colleges, all of that mattered then and all of it still matters now. Junior year is very focused on how am I going to prove to these coaches that I'm an athlete they should be looking at this upcoming season. A lot of guys have start having their offers rolling in around this time. You start to understand what's going on. Usually that's for guys who are playing on varsity as freshmen or sophomores. Um, by junior year, you should be on varsity. That should, that should be the basic level uh, of football that you're playing in the country. If you're not on varsity as a junior, you, there needs to be a very quick wake-up call. Very quick, very soon. When you're looking at your junior year and you're saying it starts in January, I'm going to go back to your earlier comment. As a parent, when you're looking at this and you're mapping this out, um, it feels like it's almost like a second job, um, to be honest with you. you. You're looking at colleges and programs because let's just pretend like uh, your, your child is a sophomore looking to go on varsity and junior, and then you start looking at opportunities that may be coming across your table. So now you have to do all that research that you're talking about. How do you weigh the opportunity of the university and the program versus the opportunity of what you what is available now for these kids? Because in all reality, you can make college into the, not only the best time for you in your life, but also a very financially rewarding time for you in your life. Yeah, I mean, it definitely comes down to preference of the player and the parents and the family, right? Um, Nowadays, you can choose between how much money am I getting from a collective to uh, how good the football program is to where the location of the football program is. Um, same basic concepts that we all had when I was in high school, just minus NIL and marketing, to be honest. Um, can but, I interrupt yeah. you just for a second? What does the collective mean? Can you go into that just for a minute for those kids or parents who don't even know what that is? Yeah, so the collective is, think of it like um, uh, the marketing uh, the marketing agent of the university. It, it, it is how the university is sponsoring kids when it comes to their um, name, image, likeness deals, their marketing deals in their um, area, so to speak. So take any university they're probably going to have a collective that is in charge of managing and and uh, producing marketing deals for their players on their football team and usually those marketing deals are pretty localized with small businesses around the university that show support or you know maybe even uh, if it's a small school a local airport um, or whatever the case is Maybe the maybe there's a, a restaurant that's you know home to that city and they want to sponsor a certain team and maybe give them a little bit of money in marketing and you know provide meals to players or whatever the case is. That's what the collective does. It's basically kind of what I do for professionals as a marketing agent, um, but for the university and for its players. So when you're talking about the collective, it goes to the entire, each individual player is a part of that collector. Yes. Now, they aren't going to have the same number or the same deal for every single player, right? Um, some players are going to get, obviously, a lot more than other players. But for the most part, every player is, you know, able to get something out of this collective bargaining deal. Um, that the university uh, has going for it. You know, maybe it's through their booster club or whatever the case is, however they um, put it together. 
but think of the collective as you know the organization within the university or supporting the university when it comes to marketing deals for the incoming players. And that just doesn't apply to football. That applies to pretty much all sports. Very. Uh, yeah. Thank you for getting to that detail for those uh, folks out there, because then you can have your independent NIL deal on top of the collector. Yeah, you can have pretty much as many marketing deals as you want. Now, this is when kind of legal stuff comes in where you have to make sure that you're not signing any um, uh, agreements that don't have any uh, like or non -com non compete agreements. Right. So. When you have a non-compete agreement, you probably won't be able to have any uh, deals with any other marketing agents slash NIL agents slash collectives or whatever the case may be, right? So having exclusive deals is probably not in the best interest of the athlete at this point. Um, you would probably want to prefer non-exclusive deals so you can get as many um, NIL deals, marketing deals as you possibly can. Very, very good. So getting back into your junior year. So January, you're starting off with the winter ball, the spring ball, then you're looking at summer camps. How many camps um, are you hoping to just get one or two camps in as a kid? What does that look like for somebody who's going into their junior year and how many camps would be would be too much? How many camps are just enough? Is it really up to the family, the, the, the indiv individual athlete? What does that look like? Well, it also depends where the athlete lives, right? So if you live in a major city, you're probably going to be afforded a lot more opportunities than if you come from a smaller city. If you come from a smaller city, you're probably going to have to travel a little bit more to get more exposure. The good thing about most of these camps is that it doesn't just offer, it's not offered by just one college or university. They tend to have many colleges and universities all come to one camp. Satellite camps is what they used to call them, very famous word, but... Basically, there's going to be a more than just one or two universities at a camp ran by maybe a small college or university, and they invite other coaches and, and other scouts and stuff to those camps. Now, it's important for those parents to do their research and understand what schools are going to be at these camps, when are these camps going to be, how efficient is it for me and my child, and how I'm going to get there, and you know, you're going to be spending money on hotels, travel, uh, time, which is very expensive, right? But ultimately, you want to make sure that you're going to the best camps possible. There are many different types of camps. Some camps you have full padded tackling camps. Other camps you have um, just t-shirt and shorts. The point is you want to get as much exposure as possible to as many universities as possible. When you make a connection with a coach, if a coach comes up to you after this camp and says he likes your abilities, make sure you take that opportunity to form that relationship with that coach because they might have another camp later that summer that you probably might need to go to. Understand, you're setting up all your eyes for this junior year fall. That's why junior year is so important because it's going to be the time where coaches can really start recruiting you, right? There's no real dead periods once your season starts. So coaches can start calling you and emailing you and writing you back. If you call them, they can call you back. And that relationship is going to be formed when they see you in person, when they see your talent, and then they want to go to your games throughout the season and verify what they saw in the summer. Then they're going to receive your tape at the end of your junior year, and they're going to verify if they like you even more. If they don't want to pull the trigger right now, that's okay. You've set the precedent for it. You still have a senior year of high school football. We'll get into all of that next episode. But junior year of high school ball is the most important because you start to really establish your relationships with these college coaches and you start to set precedent of your talent level and where you fit on that scale. I think that, that the key word and phrases that you're talking about here is the relationships and communication. Um, yeah. we, we continue to harp on that, whether you're in junior high and you need to form that relationship with your teachers or the coaches, same with high school. Mm -hmm. We are going to continue to encourage you to have the conversations and the relationships with the individuals that are going to be in your future. If you're not talking to people that are going to see future you, 
then you you need to make those situations occur because otherwise how are you going to have that vision to see your future if you don't see what individuals you want to be a part of that and i think that's the key to these camps it's the key to these communications these relationships as you're speaking about those are all extremely important in your junior year to really vet them as much as they're vetting you yeah you're gonna have to put a lot of effort in junior year just to put be quite simple about it you're gonna be with your high school team starting at the beginning of uh, that sophomore spring academically you're gonna be lifting weights you got to put in so much effort into that you're gonna you should be gaining around 10 pounds of muscle you should be getting stronger you should be getting faster you should be getting bigger and you should be focusing on your diet. You should be really honing in on what you need to do to prepare yourself to become a college athlete. That, that, that truly starts junior year. That's when weight starts getting put onto the bar and you have to start really grinding it out. And it's not just the players. This is on the parents as well because the parents are going to be just as invested, if not more, into their child succeeding. Because at the end of the day, what's at stake here? A scholarship to go play football at a university. That's a pretty big deal. That's a pretty big deal to a player who receives their first scholarship offer and then another one rolls in and then another one rolls in. And then by the end of your junior year, you might have 10 to 15, right? Yeah, that's and, that, and that's just excitement all, around, all the way around just to have that opportunity and to not only be noticed but also to be wanted. Because at the end yeah. of the day, like that, that is a big deal. Do am I wanted? Do people want the talent that I have? And it, or do people see that future? Um, that yeah. That from your standpoint in the summertime, when you're talking about just having to put in the the leg work, both the parent and the student, um, mentally, what what's the mental preparation for that? For someone like yourself, when you went through that, what was the mental preparation look like? Were you mentally and physically exhausted going through that process? Or was it something that you really looked forward to? Jan- junior year is the most exhausting year of high school, especially as an athlete. As a football player, you're going to be playing so much. You're going to be running so much. You're going to be going here, going there. You're, there's a lot of early morning wake-ups. Um, so understanding that you're doing this with a goal in mind everyone is doing this with a goal in mind of getting to the next level proving to everyone in the country that you deserve to play football at the next level um that doesn't mean just fbs or division one fbs power five group of five this could be fcs one double a this could be division two division three there's opportunities out there for everyone to play college football Mm -hmm. But that's the goal in mind. The goal in mind is to be the best player you can be. And it's going to be a grind. It's going to be hard. You're going to be running into a lot of players throughout the entire country that you've never heard of or have never played against. And they have different styles. This is where you also get to test yourself to see how are you going to be on a more um, national scale. Because up until this point, you're only playing people that were in your city, in your town, in your state. When you go to these camps, when you start traveling a little further, you're going to start seeing talent from other places, and you're going to get a realistic view of how are you against the rest of the population. That's really what it is. And the time is going to be excruciating. You're you're going to spend more time playing football than you ever have throughout your whole high school career. You're going to spend more time playing high school football your junior year than you will your senior year. That's just how it's going to be. And don't think that you're not going to be going to these camps again uh, the following summer, going into your senior year, because you're still going to have to solidify a lot of those relationships. But you got to start now. So we and we're also talking about this also widens your view. So when I look at this, it's instead of looking at the team you're playing, the division you're playing, the high school area that's around you, you know you're competing against those individuals. This puts you in an environment where you're going to be up against people with different abilities, a vast, a vast greater number of kids. And it gives you that opportunity to look at that variety to see what really is occurring out there. And I always, I always say that with schooling with the kids is you're not competing against the classroom you're in, you're competing against the world you're in. Yes. So if you're looking at your classroom and you're like, I'm really doing well in this classroom, that's great. 
but there's a big world out there that you have to continue to grind out because there's people who are grinding every day that are that are looking for an opportunity for themselves, whether it's in the classroom or in uh, in the sports world, whether it's the playbook or whether it's watching film or whether it's training. There's people who are grinding that out that junior year to really get the most out of it, to squeeze the most juice out of the lemon, if you will. I, I cannot tell you how important my junior year was when it came to showing up to as many of these camps and opportunities as possible. There were times where I had to, I actually went to a workout in uh, downtown Los Angeles. It was a, a workout that started at 5 a.m. because they wanted to end it before school started. Um, I didn't go to the high school. It was about 20 to 30 minutes away from my high school. Went to the workout, got there at 5 a.m. Um, it was about an hour and a half workout. I run into a coach who says that, um, hey, Mason, I liked your film. Um, I actually have been uh, watching other players that you've been playing against, but you've been showing up. I'm so glad that you came to this um, to this workout this morning. Here's my number. I want you to come out to a, a camp later this summer. I go to the camp. Come next uh, fall, and this was my senior year fall, uh, they're my first offer going into my first game of high school ball. Nothing like having your first offer going into your first game of senior year because all the stress, all the work, all the time, all the traveling, all the early wake-ups when you really didn't want to is just lifted off your shoulders. You finally get to just play again because I understand that it's going to be very stressful. And my parents, I want you to understand it's going to be very stressful for your student athlete who is worried about getting to the next level. And he or she is not going to stop worrying about getting to the next level until it becomes somewhat a reality for them, until they get that first offer. So they're going to be worried about getting that. They might not express it to you, but it, it is a reality of the situation. You don't know if you're going to be playing college ball until someone offers you an opportunity to play college ball. And that's just one of the biggest things that really helped me get through that last year, too. And I, I think that that's another part that parents can play a really good role or a really bad role. They can either p- apply a vice grip to your, to your kid's uh, ability and really put a lot of pressure to make a scholarship occur for them and put a lot of weight into that, which only weighs the kid, their child, even further. When you're talking about a parent who just looks at it and says, look at these programs, look how far you've come from sophomore year, look how far you've come your junior year, look at these things that have occurred, reminding them to not only compare themselves to where they were, but how far they've come. And I think as a parent who is, in reality, a guidance counselor at home, it's important to be that support staff, not a vice grip, just like an agent or a GM or a coach. When you're, when you're applying a lot of pressure, some people perform better and some people do not at all. And as a parent and in that house, I would think that you, you want an environment to where you're not feeling that pressure of having to get a scholarship by a certain time from your parents. Because I can imagine that in your case, after you put in all those work, after you're not sleeping, after you're doing all that, just to have your parents breathing down your neck about, man, man when is it going to come and when is it going to happen? That can only add to more stress. Oh, you have no idea. And um, I was, I'm very blessed. My parents never even said anything about it, right? It was more so me putting it on myself. Can you imagine? My younger brother, he's currently in the NFL. Plays in the NFL. Last year, he was the number one player at his position as a power returner in the NFL, Avery Williams. He went through this entire process and didn't get a single college scholarship offer. He did everything that I'm telling you all to do. And then some, and still, it still didn't work out for him. He did not get a scholarship offer. He got a walk-on opportunity, and he made the most of it. But I'm telling you, this, this process gives you the best chance to getting where you want to go. And sometimes, like I said earlier, when you come from a big state and you come from a high amount of talent, those, those, there are players that get lost in the sauce. It is true. Not always, if you're playing well, are they going to find you. 
My brother had 1,700 yards and 14 touchdowns in the number one um, high school conference, Trinity League, his senior year. Not a single college offer after that. He was the co-MVP of the, of the high school uh, conference. Not a single college offer after that. It happens. It happens to some of the best players. But that's no reason to ever give up. And that's no reason to ever stop trying because there's always a way. There's a chance you take a walk-on position, you get a scholarship while you're at the college as a walk-on, you start playing, and you can eventually make it. The process that we're laying out here for you guys is not something that is to be stopped until your football career is over, right? Eventually, you won't have school anymore. You know, when you when you get out of college and you make it to the professional level, to the next level, you won't have school. However, you're going to have more football. You're going to still be studying even more football now because that's now your job. You're getting paid to do that. And you want to be the best player on the field whenever you step on the field. So you're going to add even more hours to that. But this process from high school through college, it's the same process, just have to up the intensity as you continue to go and you continue to strive forward. But it, again, it's definitely possible to still not get a scholarship, but that but that's no reason to stop. And and I think that what you were alluding to with your parents and how you were blessed, I'm I'm assuming they didn't provide any additional pressure on him or you when you're going through that process and he even on his, his situation, I mean he's playing fantastic. He's impressing everybody. Um around him, the league, if you will, and he's not getting a single sniff to your parents' credit. They didn't turn to him and say, you know, we, how come we aren't seeing anything? How come nothing's coming in? Where, where's the opportunity that you're supposed to get? Yeah, it, it, it was, um, man, honestly, I can't even imagine how he felt, especially um, after watching me go through what I went through, right? I, I didn't have all the offers in the world, but I had I had some good offers. You know, I had some good opportunities to go play college ball at many places. Um, I ended up choosing UPenn Ivy League school um, for academic reasons as well as, you know, strategic football reasons at the time, what I thought was the best decision for myself as a player. Um, but he was, he had more accolades in high school than I did. He was bigger than I was. He was stronger than I was. He was faster than I was. You know, so I mean, possibly, and I don't know this, we have not really had a conversation about it because, you know, the show still must go on. He could have been looking at me very confused, like, I, I don't understand how my older brother got this and I didn't. I mean, I might have thought that if I was in his shoes, right? Because he, he was better than me. He, he was, he, the truth be told, he was always a better athlete than me. He was. Um, he, he worked a lot harder than I did. He spent more time on it. He taught me most of the things that um, I knew about football, you know, when it came to watching film. And we'll get over that in an episode uh, eventually. Those skills came from him. Um, but to see the success that I had in high school versus the success that he had in high school, it just it it goes against the whole theory of, when people say, if you're good enough, they'll find you, you know, th th not always, not always. And I think that's the important that we talked to even earlier about your ability to see talent, your ability to talk up the talent and tell coaches that these people, these, these folks that you have, that you believe in are really talented. Cause I think there's a miss. There's always a miss. Um, everyone can talk about that with, uh, the draft with, um, in the NFL, it's talked about quite often, whether it's any of the professional leagues, the draft always has misses. None of that is 100%. And those are, you have full-time folks that are looking at talent. They are evaluating talent on so many different metrics. So when you're talking about seeing through that or being able to see what talent there is and what talent you want to manage and uh, partner up with, I think that is a credit to the difficult nature of your, of your job and also the difficult nature of sports in general because there is no guarantee I mean, yeah. there's very few guarantees. And when they are, you know, yes, you, you have some once in a lifetime pre people that certainly are that. But there, still, there's no guarantee there's not going to be an injury. There's no guarantee there's not going to be some kind of issue that comes up in their life, personal or professional. There's just a lot of unknowns. Human beings are extremely complicated. 
That's what we are. And being a, having the people to help you navigate that, whether it's your parents, whether it's, you know, a coach, a teacher, that's why to your point earlier, the relationships are important. The communication is important. You need to find the right allies that are there for you who are genuinely there to see your success and to be really rooting for you in that corner. You need people in your corner. Yeah. And, and, you know, that goes really to people who advocate for you, right? Um, Nowadays, you're, you, you can have like a marketing agent advocate to these collectives and say what your worth is or your NIL valuation number is and, and all that stuff. And then, but having your high school coach plead to these coaches that come visit your campus and have meetings with him while you're in class, you probably get calls while you're in class to come to the coach's office. Him or her advocating for you is one of the most important things. Telling that staff, that coaching recruiter, hey, this player is what you're looking for. This is the type of guy that you want on your team, in your school, on campus, in your community. That's what you're looking for. And sometimes when you go to those camps and you're consistent and you build that relationship with those coaches that you've met at those camps, they might be the advocate that you need when it comes to the recruiting decision makers at their own university. The position coach might like you, but he might not have the power to give you a scholarship. He might have to convince the defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator or head coach to give you that scholarship. He might be all for you, but the defensive coordinator coordinator might not be. That actually happened to me at a university. One of my... um, first camps that I went to. I I went to um, uh, a satellite camp. I actually um, messaged a couple coaches on Facebook. I got this from one of my older um, high school friends who, you know, told me a a thing or two about reaching out to coaches. I was using Facebook. I was using Twitter. I was using Instagram to message coaches and have start having relationships like, hey, this my name is Mason Williams. This is my film. If you like it, you know, I'd love to you know, come to a camp or something like that. There was a corners coach at a small university up in the north, uh, Northwest Pacific, and um, he liked me a lot. And he was like, if it was my decision, I would give you a scholarship. But it's a defensive coordinator. Unfortunately, a defensive coordinator just didn't like me for whatever reason. But I had someone in their office advocating for my talent, and that was because of the relationship I built with him. I would call him every other night, every weekend after my games, tell them about how it went before the stats drop the next morning. And those are the type of things that you young athletes are going to have to start to do. Those are the type of things that you parents are going to have to get on your athletes about. Communicating with these coaches and remember, closed mouths don't get fed. Talk to these coaches, build relationships, keep those numbers that they give you and use them. And and I think furthermore, um, to your point about you don't know who the decision maker is in the college landscape in a matter of three years can change so drastically between the head coach to assistant coaches to coordinators. You don't know if that defensive back coach becomes a defensive coordinator at another program that really likes you. You don't know if the defensive coordinator that really likes you becomes the head coach at another program. These coaches are always switching. Nothing is permanent in this world. So I've always said, no matter what industry it is, no matter who you're dealing with, you don't know who the next CEO of the company is going to be when you talk to them. You should treat that the same way with all these positions. You don't know who the next head coach is. You don't know any of that. So every relationship that you are building could potentially be not only an offer, but a really great opportunity for you in a program that you don't even know is even in your radar. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Because so we're going to talk about this in the senior year episode next next uh, next week, because choosing a school has its own its own situation, right? Like we talked about how to choose a high school. Now choosing a college, different beast, different beast altogether. You know, you have some rules to think about. You have different types of colleges, locations, who are they playing? Where are they playing? How long is the coach there? Whole bunch of different variables. So you're absolutely right. There's a lot of different philosophies about, you know, for football players, how to choose that that college. Um, especially with NIL that 
you know, money has worked its way into one of the major factors now. Um, but I honestly share your sentiment. I was um, always told never go to the school because of the coach. Um, but not many people share that. So next episode, I will, you know, I will try my best to put my biases aside. And I will talk <laughs> about all the different things that we need to do, we need to think about when choosing the college after we've gone through that junior year, after we've gone through that summer, going into senior year, where we're, you know, starting to take visits now. We're starting to... Um, uh, get even closer to these coaches we're starting to make decisions we're starting to collect more offers as we go and then we have that senior year of, of high school football and we're leading into signing day signing day is way different um, than what it was for me when I was in high school there's a lot of different rules so a lot of you parents um, with high school kids now um, you may have been pretty familiar with what signing day is when you were in high school, now it's completely different. So we're going to talk about that as well. Senior year is going to be pretty heavy on a lot of the process, not just before choosing a college, but how to choose a college and what you're doing when you choose a college and kind of how that works with both a December graduation rate, which is the seven semesters that I've been telling you guys all about, and then the eighth semester um, graduation in May going into the summer. Um, but as far as for junior year, we're on track, right? We're getting to um, uh, that fifth semester, and we're starting to lay the foundation more and more with these coaches and our relationships, and we're playing some good ball in this fall. And then by the end of that December, hopefully you're playing for the state championship. If not, your first work out in that um, spring of your uh, junior year academically, you're now a senior. That's how you need to look at it. We're going to start a semester early, especially since we're graduating a semester early, right? Absolutely. And this and this is what we're doing with this with these episodes. Campus to Contracts really does put the contract in front and the limelight while you're in that campus lifestyle. It's not about just, oh, you know, I'm in this high school, I'm in this junior high. Oh, it's a college. It all just comes to you. Things just happen. Having that plan, looking at it as a profession, looking at it as a contract really opens your eyes and allows you to see what is in front of you. And you're talking about the senior year for the next episode, which is going to be really exciting because, again, there's a lot of big moments. And whether you have an offer or whether you don't have an offer, to your point, there's still lots of opportunities for you to make the most of of your sacrifices and your abilities. So. We, yeah. we like to look at that through your lens and we like to help you and guide you. So if you have any comments, you want to ask us any questions regarding your junior year, regarding any of these camps or programs, or how do I find out about these camps or programs? These are, are great questions. And we would, again, Mason's going to be happy to answer all these qu questions for you. But it's the biggest thing is building those relationships. Mason has a wonderful network. He has a wonderful idea of what this looks like. He's helping a lot of kids. Uh, and a lot of pro, a lot of pros, a lot of professionals work through this balancing act, this seesaw balancing act between uh, their passion of playing versus the business of playing. Very different. Um, so we still want you to have a blast. We still think it's a, a fun sport. You can have a lot of fun with it. But again, having that balance, balanced view of what you're walking into, I think is pretty important. So I think our our, our ending advice would be for the parents to lay off the. Uh, lay off the vice on your on your kid to try to get that scholarship and and to be as supportive as possible they're probably your, your child puts enough pressure on themselves i think that's a fair statement um they're not they're not doing this and and not feeling that pressure so being supportive making sure they're as well fed and well slept as possible i think those are big things and uh and helping them for their future any last words mason before we uh, cut the uh, junior high junior high school episode to a wrap yeah, you hit the nail on the head, man. It's about the communication. That's going to be the biggest thing in high school, um, forming those relationships as early as possible with those college coaches. And just understand, junior year of high school football from January through that December, it's going to be so heavy. Football, 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 football. You're going to be with your high school coach with college coaches at camps hopefully with your club coach as well it's going to be an overload well rested well fed well nutrition and just 
focus, grind. It's going to be so tiring, but hopefully it pays off for you. And we're going to talk about senior year next episode. Episode after that, I want you guys to also think about, you know, we're going to talk about the different types of um, red shirts, blue shirts, or gray shirts, excuse me, um, you know, JUCO. We're going to talk about all the different routes getting to college and through college and with football. So we're all going to tie this in from campus to contracts, and it's going to be pretty much in order. We're going to talk about clubs specifically as well in that episode after senior year. So leave comments about those um, questions that you guys have, anything concerning all of um, high school football and that process. Um, some of your questions we might be answering in other episodes, so look out for that. But um, remember to like and subscribe. Absolutely. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Campus to Contracts. That is, I'm your host, Brendan. That is the agent, Mason Williams. Uh, thanks for making time again this week. I know in your busy schedule, I look forward to everything you're doing this upcoming week. Hopefully your teams go four and four. Hopefully get some rest and hopefully you continue to help shine the light on what opportunities are there for each and every athlete that you get to represent. So again, thanks for your time, Mason, and I appreciate it. And as for Campus to Contracts, thank you so much for spending time with us.